Now, the British monarchy is one of the oldest in the world and remains highly visible, not just in the United Kingdom, but the world over, especially in countries that were British colonies. The powers of the monarchy, however, have been changing with the times. And as a new reign begins for the UK, we take a look at the history of this institution and its place in the modern political dispensation. The death of Queen Elizabeth in 2021 ushered in a new leader of the British monarchy, her firstborn son and heir to the throne, then Prince Charles. His coronation earlier this year bequeathed on Charles, now King Charles III, the title and the responsibilities that come with occupying the head of the kingdom. Charles became the 63rd monarch of the United Kingdom and the oldest one to ascend to the throne. His ascension followed in the long-established history spanning over 1,000 years and one that has been practiced each time a new king or queen takes to the throne and to the head of the monarchy first established in 827 when Egbert first established a stable and extensive rule over all of Anglo-Saxon England. 1,200 years later and the face powers and the roles of the monarchy has changed drastically. When the king and queen ruled with absolute powers, they now retain ceremonial and sentimental roles, not just in Britain, but across the realms and the Commonwealth countries where they once wielded immeasurable power. Over time, monarchs have ceased to be the decision makers. So they become ceremonial. But even in being ceremonial, they still have a lot of influence. Uh, In England, the prime minister reports almost every week to the king. It's not the king who makes the decision, but they report. And then he gives his guidance. You go to Belgium, I think they still have a king. But you don't hear much about the king. The Scandinavians, uh, the Spaniards uh, have a king who sometimes is in trouble. Um, So royalty is ceremonial. And it sounds like a good idea, especially as countries become more and more democratic. The modern-day monarch, just like the ones before, inherit the title at birth and reign, not rule, for the duration of their life, after which the crown passes to the next in line to inherit. The king, set to visit Kenya this week, remains the head of the state in the UK with powers that are largely symbolic and ceremonial. The king, who is expected to remain politically neutral, still carries out daily tasks for the government. Every day, he receives a red leather box that has daily dispatches from the government, briefings of important meetings or documents needing his signature. He also holds weekly meetings with the Prime Minister at Buckingham Palace. The meeting private with no minutes of what is discussed. King Charles III as the head of state is also expected to dissolve the government before a general election and appoint a government led by the leader of the party that has won the election, officially open the parliamentary year with the king's speech, formally approve new pieces of legislation through the royal assent, host visiting heads of state, receive ambassadors and high commissioners and perform his duties as the head of the Commonwealth, an association of 56 independent countries and act as head of state for 14 states of the Commonwealth known as the realms. As head of state and aside from the constitutional and representational duties which have developed over 1,000 years of history, the monarch has a less formal role as the head of nation. They act as a focus of national identity, unity and pride. They continue to give a sense of stability and continuity and officially recognize as a success and excellence while supporting the ideal of voluntary service. The place of the monarch in the modern day world remains debatable, especially with more nations seeking to determine their own fates. Even governance, but still the symbolism. So some people still like it. Then you have the Republican movement. People who don't want anything to do with kings or anybody like that, assuming that somebody is above everybody else. As head of state, the monarch undertakes constitutional and representational duties which have developed over 1,000 years of history. The British monarch faces new challenges and finding its footing in the fast-changing world and asserting its influence in the areas that they once wielded power in is one such challenge that the 63rd monarch will be hoping to maneuver during his reign. Brenda Wanga.